uh, uh, Srinidhi mentioned that uh, about uh, sexual education that it should start early. Yes, it must start early. Uh, but and I'll tell you the reason why. Because if you look at uh, the phases of development in a child's life, uh, early childhood is important. Then young ch uh, childhood when they are in their primary years and they face abuse. Right, some some children face abuse from very uh, early age. But most children, like most students, face abuse, any kind of abuse, like bullying, harassment, sexual uh, teasing, anything, during the phase of adolescence. So adolescence means the age from 10 to 20 is uh, generally de uh, described in literature as a phase of adolescence. So during this is a very, this is a key period in development. Now what happens in this period is that there are uh, numerous hormonal, physical, biological changes taking place in children. And and because they're adjusting to these changes in their body, their size, their shape, and then they're trying to come to terms with their sexuality, and they're trying to adapt to new ways of thinking, they're trying to strive for emotional maturity, as well as they're trying to uh, form an identity that is independent of their parents, their family, and the other adults in their family. So now this, when they have so, such responsibility, so it puts a lot of pressure on them. They are under a lot of stress, which leads to increase in anger in males, increase in irritability. And then in female, it, it again leads to increase in depression. So because, uh, and this, uh, th these changes, along with what happens in the culture, outs like uh, in the larger society in India, the, uh, the, mas the toxic masculinity that we see, that a male, uh, uh, stereotypically a male figure has to behave in a certain way and uh, has to uh, show a level of aggression to be called a man or uh, the preference for uh, boys in the family. So all this sort of ma manifest into several behavioral problems. The behavioral problems can, I sort of there's a range to it, but that involves your antisocial behavior, your stealing, taunting, aggression that involves bullying, threatening, anxiety, withdrawal, some uh, adolescents become extremely shy, hypersensitive, they have self-esteem issues. Uh, as far as academics is concerned, they have attention problem, they have more impulsive behavior, or uh, they try to, or sometimes, uh, even physically, like they are more jittery, they start fumbling, or socially, they try to withdraw. Now, now this is too much of a burden to be carried out by like um, 10 to uh, 15 years old when they're in school and even later. So uh, another, so the point here is that why it happens, it happens for different psychological, as uh, biological, as well as social reasons. Now, uh, the coming to the other part of it that, now how do you, uh, what do parents do when this is going on? So first thing, parents and both educators, I would say, but uh, I have spoken because of my research and because of my work, I have spoken to students uh, in this age group in the recent past. They're more comfortable uh, sharing it with their parents than educators. Now, what can parents and educators both do if they, First of all, one has to understand that these changes are taking place. So your, your sort of loving, adorable child who is so gullible, docile, might not uh, react or behave in a similar way. So you have to first acknowledge that there are changes taking place in, uh, and uh, the person is trying to uh, become an individual form and identity. It's an extremely crucial uh, point to support that individual. So how do you support them? First is that you understand what are these changes taking place. Second is you want to get involved in the child's life even more because, uh, but this is the time when they have to start uh, realizing that uh, teenagers don't share their problems, but not with their parents, not with their educators or not with adults. And one has to be respectful of that. So then what? What if uh, your child is involved in some kind of, uh, is facing some kind of threat? In that case, keep the conversation open. When you uh, approach your child, you're talking to your child. Uh, it's okay to talk. Uh, it's okay to ask questions like what is going on and getting a reply that nothing is going on. Don't irritate me. It's extremely rude and disrespectful, but try to understand it from the child's point of view again. And sometimes this sort of lashing out happens in the public also that uh, these adolescents uh, lose their temper 
and again i would say that try to remember the larger picture in mind about what is going on with them that they are really confused about their identity they have academic pressure social pressure friendship pressure romantic relationships the and their breakups and all this going on so one thing uh, other than that trying to understand then uh, keeping try to keep an open conversation now this open conversation doesn't really happen overnight generally uh, you have that kind of culture at home and uh, sometimes uh, ch uh, children withdraw sometimes they participate and it's okay if they are participating you should be really thankful that they are participating if they are not then you should just wait and another thing that uh, is very common in indian culture that we tend to give a lot of advices particularly to to uh, adolescents i think as much as possible the focus should be on listening that what is going on and uh, coming uh, going back to that uh, online life that children have one cannot ignore ridicule ridicule or mock their online life their online life is as real as their offline life so try to understand that what your children do online what kind of friends they have online and what kind of conversation so this is a sort of long process and it there is going to be no fixed solution there's no going to be no quick solution what you have to do is just keep the communication on so that when your child is in danger you are aware